In the previous section, we looked at the features of the cell membrane that enable it to control the movement of substances into and out of the cell. These features also give the cell membrane the properties which determine the passage of substances into and out of the cell. We look at these properties one by one and relate them to the movement of substances. The first would be the selective permeability, also known as semi-permeability. The tiny pores on the cell membrane will allow substances that are small enough through but not those that are too big to pass through. So that's the cell membrane. And here we have the pore. Now this property enables the membrane to select what enters and leaves the cell. For example, sugar molecule like sucrose is too large to pass through while water molecule being small enough will pass through the pores in the cell membrane the membrane is therefore said to be semi permeable semi permeable and this property allows the membrane to select what enters and what leaves the cell. For this reason, the cell membrane is said to be selectively permeable due to the presence of the pores that determine what size of the particles will pass through and those that will not be allowed to pass either into the cell or out of the cell. The second property of the cell membrane that influences the movement of substances in and out of the cell is the presence of electric charges. An electric charge can be positive or negative. In most cells, the outer is the outer membrane surface has a positive charge. So the positive charges are spread over the outer surface while the inner surface that is the inner surface of the cell membrane has a negative charge so the negative charges be spread over the inner surface of the cell membrane now this type of membrane now is said to be polarized the opposite poles Whereas, whereby the outside has a positive charge relative to the inner surface. So the membrane is said to be polarized. Now, the presence of these charges determine which substances will move in or out and also at what rate. Charged particles would move faster across the cell membrane than the neutral non-charged particles. For example, a negatively charged particle would move faster across the cell membrane from the inside to the outside than a positively charged particle. This is because of the polarization of the cell membrane. This negative charge particle will be attracted by the positive charge on the outer surface so it will move faster compared to the positively charged particle. On the other hand, a negatively charged particle will cross the cell membrane faster from the outside and into the cell again because of the polarization of the cell membrane whereby the outside is positive and the inside is negative. So the negative charge on the inner surface will attract the negatively charged particles 
that will then move faster than a neutral or positively charged particles into the cell membrane. And that is how electric charges affect the permeability of the cell membrane and the rate at which substances will move across. The third property of the cell membrane is its sensitivity to changes in temperature and pH. Now, the proteins in the membrane function best within a particular range of temperature and pH. Any change in the temperature and the pH will change the nature and thereby deform these proteins. High temperatures and extreme pH will denature the structure of the protein and therefore the membrane resulting in loss of normal functions. Now, this is the normal cell membrane with the pores present that regulate the movement of substances in and out. Now, when exposed to high temperature or extreme pH, that is too much acidity or alkalinity, then the structure of these proteins will change. Some of these proteins will get deformed and the pores that are present are blocked such that substances cannot freely move through. Or because of the deformity, the pores become too wide and such that there is no control or regulation of the substances that move through and those particles and molecules that previously could not pass through will ma move through freely. So that uh, what results from the deformation and or denaturation of the cell membrane is loss of semi-permeability. And once that happens, then the cell membrane cannot function normally. Another property of the cell membrane is its thinness. Even though the membrane has three layers, it is very, very thin. In fact, it is approximately 7.5 nanometers in most cells which is about 7.5 times 1 over 10 to power 9 meters, quite thin. Now the thinness promotes rapid movement of substances into and out of the cell. Even though the primary function of the cell membrane is to contain the materials within the cell, but it also controls what moves in and out. And it is important that it is thin enough to allow for the rapid movement of substances into and out of the cell. Now, the fifth property of the cell membrane is due to the presence of the proteins. Remember, the proteins primarily are structural components of the cell membrane. But in addition to that function, they also facilitate the movement of substances across. This occurs in two ways. First, by forming channels within the cell membrane through which the substances will pass. Now, at various points within the cell membrane, the proteins are arranged in such a way as to create channels or tunnels through which certain molecules can move either from the outside to the inside or the reverse from the inside of the cell to the outside. So without these channels, these molecules, which in many cases are normally too large to pass through the normal route across the cell membrane, thus they can only pass through the special channels that are created by the presence of the proteins within the cell membrane. Now, the second way in which these proteins facilitate 
the movement of substances across the cell membrane is by acting as carriers. So they're known as carrier proteins. The carrier proteins are located within the cell membrane. So in each cell within the cell membrane there are particular proteins that move across back and forth within the cell membrane and in the process ferry certain molecules across so the specific molecules will attach themselves onto the carrier protein which then moves across from one surface to the other Upon reaching the other surface, the molecule is released. So in this way, these proteins facilitate the movement of other molecules either from the outer surface into the inner surface or vice versa, that is from the inner surface to the outer surface across the cell membrane.